Hey guys, what is up? Welcome back to part six of our WordPress tutorial series on building a plugin. Last time I left us right here. This is right when we uh, added some fields and some bootstrap and all that. And we added some menu items uh, down here, a sub menu and a, a general settings with a callback that called in this page. And what we're gonna do today is we're just gonna focus on actually saving some settings in these boxes and then being able to recall those settings and show them. And I'm actually gonna focus on these two. I'll probably get to this multiple select in the next one, but it's the same process exactly as this here. And uh, the way that we do that is actually, it's, it's kind of like a three part thing. The first thing we have to do is we have to register our settings inside of the WordPress options. We're gonna be using uh, what's called an option or when you create a form, uh, you attach it to the built-in WordPress options API and that allows these settings to be saved to the database so let's just get right into it um, and like I said it's a three-part thing you have to register the settings you have to uh, assign those settings to the fields and then you have to save them and then recall them out so let's just start right by going back into our Visual Studio this is uh, everything that I left last time except I have a page where I've already updated my own code and I'll just be kind of showing you examples of how it worked I, I wrote all of it and uh, so it's gonna be easier for me just to pull it from where I already wrote it but we're going to start right here in class plugin name admin and this is just in your uh, partial or I mean I'm sorry in your admin folder let me just reminimize these and it's just your base one that's in your admin folder and the reason we need this is because if you remember uh, this is where our admin functions get called uh, from our base class plugin name which is right here in our includes so in just our includes folder if we just do the plugin name it's going to give us this file and this is where we added our admin menus that called uh, this this loader the admin menu that was the hook and then it, to the plugin admin uh, class and then that uh, function right here to add in these and then those their callbacks were these partials pages and all that all right if you need to uh, get familiar with that watch the videos before this one so we're going to start right here because uh, we have a couple of uh, in our display page. This is the the partial for the general uh, for the general settings page that we created, and this is that form that we took from uh, that Bootstrap example. So as you see, it's just an open form with some form group items. These are all marked up as Bootstrap, and we have an email, a drop down select, and a multiple select, and a submit button. And in order to turn this into a WordPress form that can be saved, we're actually going to start by heading into the form and we're going to say the method type as post because we need the variables to travel in the header, not in the URL. And then we are going to say action and we're going to say options.php. This is a built-in API call inside of WordPress that will take our options and will store them into a database to be recalled later. So that's all we need to do as far as the, the main form that wraps everything. But now what we need to do is we need to go into each of our inputs. In this case, it's the email text input. And anywhere in here, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna say the name equals, and we need to give it a name. And in this case, let's just call it the email. So now we have a name for that first one. Let's take this. And on the second one, let's just say that this was like a number of days or something. So we would just call this the days. And then down here on this next one, the uh, select, multiple select, we would just call it the multi select. Okay, so now everything's named. And so now we have three named boxes that can be saved and recalled later. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to head back into our the admin page where we call our functions. And we're going to set up a new section down here. And we're gonna go ahead and just copy this commenting strip. And we're gonna say, register custom fields for plugin settings. And remember guys, I talked about not really caring too much about super proper coding. I'm kind of just making this really easy and breaking it down so you can see exactly like this is how, this is how simple it really is to put it together. All right, so we're gonna create a new function and we can call this function whenever we want. We're gonna say public function, uh, let's just call this register WP10 general settings. Okay, and make sure to open up the parameters, close it, all right. And we're gonna say registers all settings for general settings page. Okay, now, 
there's a few other things, by the way, that we need to add to our form. We're going to go back and do that here in a second. I just kind of wanted to set this up first to, to show you an example of how to register and then how to call this to our form. But one thing that I needed to do back over here actually was I needed to drop down the top of the form here and we need to open a PHP uh, section because we need to call in some options that WordPress uses in order to identify this form. So the first one is actually an option called settings fields and this uh, kind of lets WordPress know that this is this particular group of settings and I'm going to go ahead and call it WP10 custom settings so I'm naming it. Then we need to do one more which is do settings sections and this will allow us to access the settings once they're set. All right. So make sure that's inside the form and this is the form or this is the uh, fields that these names are going to save under inside of our database. So now that we have those two things in there, we can actually go back to what we were doing before. We need to take this name with us. And then down in here, we're going to do the following thing to start registering our settings. We're going to say register setting and I'm going to get rid of all of the uh, where it tries to tell me, you know, it gives me all the options. And a lot of this could be done as arrays, absolutely. I'm like, I keep saying and iterating, I'm just kind of doing it the long way around to show. All right, so the first parameter it wants is the, uh, the field that we're um, saving to. And remember, we just named it that, so it knows that all the settings inside that form are for this, for this field, or for this set of settings. And the first setting was what? the email. It's actually smart to copy these directly and put them here so that, that way you don't typo them and then it gives you errors at runtime. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. So we have the days. That's going to go right here. And then we have the multi select. And that goes right here. Okay, so now we have a new function right here. Oops right here that we're going to copy this function because this is in our admin functions and we're going to go back to here this is the overall plugin in the includes and we're going to say register our general settings and we're going to do it exactly like you see above I can copy that too but I'm actually going to type this one out and we're going to add an action and we're going to use mostly the same settings, except in this one, the main difference is we're going to access the admin init, which is the initialization of the plugin, where it's going to go ahead and create the uh, register those settings for us. That's the hook that we're using in this particular case. So when the plugin is initialized, admin initialized, it's going to, init it's going to register these settings to the database. Okay, and then the uh, function it's calling to is that function we created. So when this plugin gets created, it's going to say this it needs to call to the admin in it, the plugin admin, which is our admin class, and it needs to call to this function and it's going to hook to the admin in it. And so it's going to hook in these registered settings and that's going to allow these fields to be saved into our database on this form. Let's go ahead and save all this and then test it out. All right. So back in here, if we, I'm actually going to go back to the plugins and just, uh, deactivate and reactivate this plugin. Alright, so I just reactivated it. Let's go ahead and go back to our settings page. Okay, now obviously there's no settings currently set here, so there's really nothing to call. But let's go ahead and do a email or something like that and let's save it. All right, so it's saved. Now, how do we know that? Well, the thing is, if we wouldn't have uh, registered our settings into the WordPress database, it would have given us uh, an error page. It would have said, uh, your options have not been whitelisted, and that means that their WordPress won't accept them because it hasn't been, a, it's kind of a security feature to keep things from being entered into the database that aren't allowed. And that's why we had to create this uh, registration function right here to register all these settings. So when we just submitted that form, that, that email I put in actually went into the database, but it's not displaying here. Okay, it's not showing that we've entered something in the email address because we need to output that inside our code. And we need to output that inside of here. I'm gonna show you guys how to do that right now. And so we can do that by adding a value class, like or a value uh, parameter to say the email, and then we can output it doing this. We can go, we can open up a PHP tag, and we can say echo get option. We don't need any of that information in there. And we're gonna just do something real easy here, and it is the email. Okay, 
So if there is an email in the database, because of how we called in these settings here, when we call in get option, the, oh yeah, it's misspelled in fact, so it's not even gonna work. There we go. Remember what I said about copy and pasting so that you don't screw it up? And I just did it anyway. <laughs> all right. Anyway, so all right. So if something is in the database already for the email, it's going to output it now as a value. If not, this will be empty. So let's go back here and see. Let's do a refresh. And there it is. Because that's what's currently contained under the database settings for this. And how do I know that? Because if I go com, com as you can see, I've already done this before. And I save this. Right now that's what's in there and that's what's being displayed back to us. Now if we have a select here and we change the select to like number four, for example, and we submit it, we're just gonna get number one again, but number four is in fact saved in the database. Well, how do we fix that problem in a select? Well, as HTML5 is based, when you wanna pre-select an option from a dropdown, you have to do it like this. So say it was number three, but we saved number four. So if we wanted number four to show up, we, that would have to be in our number four, this selected here. The problem is though, is we can't really do that. Be, uh, off, like we can't do it up here or anything like that. It has to be inside of the particular option. So I'm gonna show you a way to do that in your um, form group right here for this particular dropdown. And you can do it like this, open up a PHP tag. And we're gonna set a new variable called maybe like a selected option or something like that. And then that's going to equal, guess what? We're going to get, and it's not echo because we're not outputting it anywhere. So we're going to say get option, and we're going to do the days. And it's going to return the value because you see the value or the options. The option gets saved to the database. So that's what it's going to return is a one, two, three, four, five in this particular case. So now the plugin selected option, the plugin selected option is going to contain the day that we've chosen. In this case, it would be four. But that's still not going to solve our problem of selecting it. So we got to do it like this. We have to write one more statement real quick right here. And it's going to look like this. We're going to make a quick PHP if statement. And we're going to say if and remember, by the way, since we created this variable in PHP in this page, it can be, even though I closed the bracket up above, I can still access the variable from down here. If it equals, it's two equal signs, one, because we're on the one option, guess what we're gonna do? We're going to echo just the word right here in the code, selected. And that solves our problem of if number one, so if selected option equals one, it's gonna echo selected right here, just the word selected, but look, we're inside the opening tag still of the option. So it's gonna place the word selected with this space, and it's gonna say selected if it's one. Now, how can we do this across the others? You probably already guessed, it's pretty easy to do, just like this. Paste it, and all the other options, and then change the value. If it equals two, output selected on two. If it equals three, output selected on three, on four, and on five. Now let's head back to our page. I'm going to reselect four again, submit my settings, and guess what? Look what it is. It equals four. And if we uh, inspect this element, you're gonna see that four has the word selected next to it. See that? but it just says selected equals nothing, but that's it. So it has properly uh, selected the correct item. Let's go ahead and change it back to two or three. Look, so three, same thing, two, same thing. All right, now why is this important? I'm gonna go ahead and end the video here. Uh, we could do the multi-select too, and it'd be a very similar process. I'll probably show that in one of the next videos, or we'll get rid of this and do something totally different. But why is this important? Well, for a lot of reasons. One, it allows users to save information into the plugin that you've created. Two, it allows us to register them as short codes, say that this had been a, um, some kind of uh, place to put in like extra code or say it was like you wanted to input a message here and then you wanted the message to show out here. Well, we could do that very easily, uh, no problem at all. We could now call this information from our option even at this moment and output it as a short code we could do all kinds of stuff we can call this information from other places and use it to manipulate other parts of wordpress and all that so that's going to wrap us up on part six for saving a simple very simple way to create a setting save system on wordpress boilerplate 
And part seven, we're probably gonna clean this up a little bit and we're actually gonna create a short code, I think, that goes ahead and outputs this information, maybe in like the header of our site or something. Maybe we'll even hook into our header and do that. With our short code, maybe it'll create a ho uh, header hook function and all that. Well, I'm just trying to keep it as simple as possible. Anyway, like, subscribe, comment. I really appreciate you guys watching and I'll see you in part seven.